If you're fed up with how unsocial social media has become, you're not alone in giving it a thumbs down. The multi-trillion dollar industry likes to pretend it's our friend, but there's now irrefutable evidence it's actually inflicting significant harm, especially on teenage users. And it's Facebook that's accused of being the greatest offender. Last week, a whistleblower bravely made public secret documents revealing how the business prioritises profits over people's well-being. The release of the Facebook files is so damaging, it's been called social media's big tobacco moment. But as you'll see, it's really just the start of the company's problems. Like just about every member of her generation, Jen Leon Fort's entire youth has been dominated by social media. I hate how big a role social media plays in my life. Like, if I'm not on it, I'm uninformed and it gives me anxiety. And it gives me anxiety when I'm on it too. I feel like social media has defined our generation and we were the guinea pigs of social media companies. The perfectly curated lives this 24-year-old sees online are often a reminder of her own perceived inadequacies, as platforms like Facebook and Instagram use their algorithms to target her with content that will play on her emotions. When I look at you, I see a vibrant young woman, but when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see and how much is that shaped by what you've seen online? Um, you're gonna make me cry now. To be perfectly honest, I see a failure when I look in the mirror. Um, and because everyone is curating how they look online, the only evidence I have before me is that everyone is doing better than you and everyone is more attractive than you and my brain can't see past that evidence. Every parent worries this is the impact social media is having on their children. And it's the reason why so many question whether Facebook really does enough to care for its users. We are treating our lives, our bodies, our faces as a commodity to sell to your friends and family for the currency of likes, followers, subscriptions, for being a viral hit. We're trading in likes and um, creating content to sell a version of ourselves that doesn't even exist. Jen's story is just one example of how Facebook is well and truly sewn into the fabric of modern society. With more than two and a half billion people connected by the social network, it's almost impossible to imagine a world without it these days. Hi, I'm Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, an online social directory. Created in 2004 by Silicon Valley's golden boy, Mark Zuckerberg, and now we're at 100,000 people, so who knows where we're going next. Today, it's arguably the most influential company in the world. But its reputation is beginning to rot. Facebook has long been accused of abandoning its duty of care when it comes to online abuse, bullying and misinformation. We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. But now, in a watershed moment, irrefutable evidence shows the social media behemoth decided the mental health of its users was less important than making money. Facebook has realized that if they change the algorithm to be safer, people will spend less time on the site, they'll click on less ads, they'll make less money. Armed with top secret company documents, this former employee turned whistleblower has evidence that shows what Facebook really cares about. There were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. And Facebook over and over again chose to optimize for its own interests, like making more money. This brave woman is Frances Haugen, a longtime manager at Facebook. Before quitting the business, she boldly copied thousands of highly classified documents, which she's now made public. Facebook's own research says they cannot adequately identify. They're known as the Facebook files, and they're damning. The internal research showed Facebook knew its platforms were toxic for teen girls, but did nothing about it. 
In fact, the company aimed to expand its influence into the pre-teen demographic, the documents describing that age group as valuable but untapped. When we realized big tobacco was hiding the harms it caused, the government took action. Last week, Francis Haugen was invited to speak before US Congress. When we figured out cars were safer with seatbelts, the government took action. I implore you to do the same here. It was an historic moment as she made an impassioned call to rein in the social media superpower that is Facebook. The choices being made inside of Facebook are disastrous for our children, for our public safety, for our privacy, and for our democracy. And that is why we must demand Facebook make changes. Mark Zuckerberg posted his response to the claims on Facebook, saying most of us just don't recognize the false picture of the company that is being painted. At the heart of these accusations is this idea that we prioritize profit over safety and well-being. That's just not true. They've just tried to say that she's taken things out of context, which is not true. In fact, if anything, there's the most context we've ever seen for what's happening inside of Facebook with all of the, the documents and the disclosures. John Ty co-founded the legal organisation Whistleblower Aid and is now representing Frances Haugen in her campaign against Facebook. How brave do you think Frances is? Very brave. Uh, she personally took on a risk uh, to go against this trillion dollar company, uh, you know, all by herself. Frances is uh, incredibly smart, incredibly courageous, uh, very thoughtful, uh, articulate, and just um, the right person for this moment. Is there a pattern of behaviour at Facebook over the years in terms of knowing that something is doing damage but, but not really doing anything about it? I think that's fair. Um, many of these allegations have been leveled at Facebook for years. The difference this time is the documents to prove it. The perfect storm is now engulfing Facebook, and it's not just Frances finding her voice. What would they have to pay you to do that job again? Oh, God, I wouldn't go back. No, there's no, there's no amount that would allow me to go back to Facebook, no. Ignore, ignore, delete, delete. You'd be forgiven for not knowing what these people are doing. But they're actually performing a very important job. They're part of a global army of tens of thousands of people cleaning up the internet. Ignore, ignore, delete. To keep us delete. safe. Delete. And what they're exposed to day in, day out, is nothing short of harrowing. You see a whole lot of nudity, you know, you see aborted fetuses, um, you see people killing themselves live, you see imagery from mass graves. If you've ever reported an inappropriate post on social media, hoping it'd be removed, you might be surprised to learn it had likely land in the lap of a human content moderator. It's a tough job, made worse by an industry rife with low pay and poor working conditions, with Facebook outsourcing most of this dirty work to third party operators, so it doesn't have to deal directly with those fighting on the front line. Now though, brave insiders like Spencer Dar are blowing the whistle on social media giants and telling us what life is really like behind the screens. You know, there's a video and you can't make out what it is and you press play on it and somebody's chopping uh, another human being's head off with um, a chainsaw while somebody, you know, sits there and films and watch it then you'll have more benign content, and then you click on another video, and it's a woman being gang raped while somebody uh, stands there with a camera and watches and does nothing. Listening to you explain what you saw, it sounds like each one of those videos was just a punch in the guts for you. Yeah, you know, at the time, it's just like you action that, you safety escalate it in the hopes that that person is going to get some help, you know, but then you go back and think about it and it's just like, you know, 
It's just, I mean, it's digital, but it's real life. When you get up every morning knowing that you're about to see the worst of humanity, you kind of, <laughs> you don't forget that very easily. You sound a bit like someone who's been to war. I mean, I guess sometimes it felt like that. At 23, university graduate Alison Trebaz was excited to land a role as a subject matter expert for tech giant Cognizant in Arizona. Its main client was Facebook, and Alison quickly discovered her new title was just a fancy name for a content moderator. I remember seeing a lot of child abuse, a lot of like gore. Um, we had quite a few beheadings. It was really messed up. How long into this job was it before you started thinking, whoa, this isn't what I signed up for? It wasn't until the Vegas shooting. It was the catastrophe that made the world stand still. When a gunman opened fire at a music festival on Las Vegas's famous strip, killing 59 people in the deadliest mass shooting in American history. We could definitely hear it, feel it, smell the gunfire. The very thought of the tragedy is traumatising enough, so imagine what it would have done to people like Alison, who had to trawl through hours and hours of horrific content, removing anything that contained dead bodies so that we didn't have to see them on Facebook. You must feel sick to your stomach when you're working on a day like that. Uh, it was it was horrible. It's really complicated because you have to desensitize yourself to it because you have to get through it. It's a job. It's what you're getting paid to do. But going home that day was traumatizing. I didn't want to talk about it. There wasn't a good way of dealing with it. You just kind of bottle it up and then hope you don't break. You'd think those who were brave enough to take on such a confronting role for the sake of our safety would be taken care of themselves, both financially and emotionally. But sadly, that's often not the case. Content moderators say their industry is just another example of Facebook prioritising profits over people. Our regular moderators got paid, I believe, 15 an hour, which is kind of a slap in the face when you're making you know, decisions that affect things on a global scale. We were executing policy similar to a way like a lawyer would with law, because we were reading it, we were interpreting it, and we were applying it to a situation. And none of us are trained in that. <laughs> so it, it really felt like a joke. What was the support like on offer for you? <laughs> um, most of the support that we had, I think, came from our coworkers, our managers constantly brought up, remember you have an NDA and you're not even, like the NDA doesn't allow you to even talk to your partner about it. Um, Cause I was constantly like, well, I wonder if they're gonna find out that I told my husband what we do, um, or if they're gonna find out that I'm trying to find a counselor. The NDA was constantly held over our heads. Um, and yeah, the resources just, they weren't there. I would not want to be a content moderator. Uh, I think it's a really hard job. Few people know the inner workings of Facebook quite like Stephen Sheeler. For four years, he was the boss of the platform's Australian division, turning it into one of the most successful markets in the world. He says of all the major issues Facebook is facing at the moment, its treatment of content moderators is one of the most pressing problems. You can look at a lot of industries over the past 100 years and how they've changed. Construction, mining, um, even f things like food service. You know, they continue to get better and better and better. I think content moderation is uh, a new job that's popped up that needs the same kind of, kind of tender loving care that we've given to a lot of other jobs over the past, you know, 100 years. Is the brutal reality of big businesses like this that it, it does need some sort of financial pressure on them to, to finally spark them into action? I think most businesses try to minimise the regulation, minimise the taxes they pay, minimise their costs. 
So Facebook and social media are no different in that way. But I think the, the problems of social media, the problems of the internet are so great, so acute, uh, and so vast that we probably need to move a little faster than just letting those companies sort it out themselves. But while governments have been slow to force Facebook into reform, its own workers have now taken matters into their own hands. Sick of being silenced, the content moderators have banded together and are taking the fight for their rights to a new battleground. It's absolutely unacceptable for a multi-billion dollar corporation, you know, to have people on the front lines putting their psychological well-being on the line to have to scrounge. That was, when I thought more about that, I was just like, so, something needs to be done about that. Shouldn't I be over it? These are the thoughts of a broken man. They were just words, images, and videos on a screen, right? His mind tormented and bruised after working as a content moderator for Facebook. Similar to how police will never eradicate all the crime, firefighters will never extinguish all the fire, content moderator's job is an impossible one and at times... Three years ago, Spencer Dar accepted a role as a content moderator for Accenture, Facebook's largest third-party operator. Thrilled to have a job that he knew would help protect others, nothing could have prepared him for the confronting task at hand. I mean, within the first week or two, I started having nightmares um, about some of the content that I'd seen. Um, I did not expect that or see that coming. I mean, for lack of a better description, just kind of this like grossness that just kind of sits in your chest. <laughs> like, was the support appropriate? Was it the support the level that you needed? No, not at all. Uh, the psychological well-being of content moderators are, you know, frankly, not a priority for Facebook. Spencer's trauma is palpable, made worse by the company's clear lack of care. After just four months in the firing line, he developed a severe PTSD and suicidal thoughts. So he didn't think twice about taking his fight against Facebook to court. The content moderators were not properly trained. They were not warned about the type of work they were going to be doing. And I don't think anyone really understood the effect of what they were being asked to do would have on them long term. Lawyer Daniel Charest recently led a groundbreaking class action against Facebook in the US. Spencer Dar was one of 11,000 former moderators who joined the case, suing the social media giant for failing to provide a safe workplace. Was this a group of Davids taking on Goliath? Yeah, even David is maybe an overstatement because at least David was a trained fighter. You know, these are people who, they didn't come into these jobs because they had massive resources. They came to these jobs because they needed, they needed work. And I'm not trying to belittle that, it's, it's work, you know, uh, and, and they were there to do it. The, the lack of support from these big businesses, do you think that came from a lack of knowledge, lack of care, or, or just penny pinching? My assessment of that question is that it started with a lack of understanding and then it just never rose to the level of um, a priority to fix soon enough. Facebook claims it started using new technology to limit content moderators' exposure to confronting material, but its lack of care until now has proved costly. Without admitting wrongdoing, Facebook this week paid $52 million in damages, working out at just $1,000 each for the 11,000 content moderators, with some funds also going into a shared support service. But Spencer, who's still scarred by the job, thought that was simply not enough. And so he objected to the settlement, purely so he could put his story on the record and force Facebook to listen. It's just not enough. I didn't, especially for, you know, a company that makes, you know, $55 billion a year in revenue. I mean, to me, it just, it almost seemed like a slap in the face. Like, you know, like, you know, shut up and go away. And also legally, we don't ever want to have to deal with this again. You know, it felt like an insult. 
Um, and that's that's why I objected to that settlement. I was just, I had to say something at least. There's a common thread emerging, whether that be the treatment of content moderators or everyday users of social media, Facebook puts profit first, despite clear evidence their business model is ruining lives. Voices like that of whistleblower Francis Haugen are getting harder to ignore. It's time for reform. Facebook wants you to believe that the problems we're talking about are unsolvable. They want you to believe that you must choose between a Facebook full of divisive and extreme content or losing one of the most important values our country was founded upon, free speech. That to be able to share fun photos of your kids with old friends, you must also be inundated with anger-driven virality. They want you to believe that this is just part of the deal. I am here today to tell you that's not true. For young Brisbane woman, Jen Leon Fort, this push for reform is something to like and share. After years of mental health issues, she's adamant were exacerbated by social media. Now something is finally being done to help other impressionable minds in Australia and around the world. You know, I yearn for a world without social media, but I know that's not the answer. We have to find a middle ground that keeps people safe, that we are ensuring trust and love in our society and our community so that we can come together and help each other. Did, did it seem like a bit of a moment of reckoning to you? Absolutely. If they were gonna be hiding research from us that they know exactly what their platform is doing to young people and uh, choosing their company and their profits over our well-being, they deserve everything that's coming for them. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.